A solo ride from India to Australia sounds impossible, not for her. Hi, I'm Candida Lewis. I love challenges and I love pushing the limits. I've covered different terrains and weather conditions, but this ride has been the most challenging and toughest. Alistair Farland's words really changed my life. He passed away during his world trip, so I thought it would only make sense to ride from Bangalore to Sydney and finish the trip at his home. I prefer riding solo. It's a whole different world because you get to meet so many people, you experience different cultures. This is the longest overlanding ride that I've done. I was looking out for a motorcycle that was reliable. The Domino is really comfortable to ride. It has the perfect power. I was actually doing jumps on the motorcycle, trying to push the limits. I was trying to break the bike, but it did not break. That's where I got the confidence that this is the motorcycle that's going to take me all through. I gave my motorcycle the name Sky. It actually became like my best friend. So now we are like so connected and we are always talking to each other and keeping each other going. With Bengaluru as the flag off point in India, Candida set forth on her journey to Australia. On her way northwards through the east, she witnessed a side of India she hadn't imagined. I was so happy, thrilled and excited by all the encouragement and support that I received from people all over India, especially the people that came for the flag off in Bangalore, the people that I met in Hyderabad, the bikers that rode along with me in every city in India, the locals that came forward and were there to support me. Very thankful for all of it. India's support fueled her ride. She was ready for the next country, Myanmar until she discovered another land. Instead of my first international border being Myanmar, I'm actually going to Bhutan, the land of happiness and the land of thunder dragon. Before I could enter Bhutan, there was a lot of chaos, a lot of noise, dust, the roads were very bad. But once I entered Bhutan, it was very different. It was so peaceful. The people were always smiling. That's when I got to know that's why everyone calls this place as the kingdom of happiness. A peaceful journey need not mean it's an easy one. Bhutan offered tough uphill turns and intense fog. There were some stretches that I couldn't even see my hand, couldn't even see the road. The Domino performed really well on steep inclines, through the fog, through the slippery roads because it was raining continuously. As the climb went higher, the lack of oxygen tested her capabilities. After hours of riding uphill, Candida finally reached the Chalela Pass, the highest pass in Bhutan. You just feel like you have wings that can take you anywhere. After exploring the land of Bhutan, she was ready for Myanmar. But to reach there, she had to cross the northeast of India. After Bhutan, I rode back to India and that is where the real adventure began. In northeast, the terrains were a challenge terrains were always changing. Every few hundred kilometers, it went from tarmac to dirt roads to rocky roads, a lot of gravel, a slush. That is where I knew this was a proper adventure. Battling through varied terrains, she headed towards Kohima, but the bad roads made her drop speed. I have to head fast because uh, it gets dark at around 4.30 in Kohima and I have just half an hour left to complete 10 kilometers. 
I don't do a lot of night riding because I prefer riding in the day. I was in this forest and I did not know where I was going. It was really tough. The lights on the domino were really helpful. I could see really well in the dark. But amongst all her struggles, the northeast was still rewarding. My most wonderful experience were when I visited the Living Root bridges. So I'm walking towards the Living Root bridges. It's always been my dream to come and see this place and uh, find me here. And the different waterfalls all across the northeast. There's like a hundred of them, and all so pristine and clear water. Entering Myanmar through the Friendship Road, her journey took her through the heart of Southeast Asia. There's like hundreds of bridges, a lot of wooden bridges, steel bridges, and it's so fun riding over them because some of them are broken. A lot of them make a lot of noise when you ride through. But Myanmar presented a new set of challenges. The obstacles that I faced in Myanmar was I had to pass the whole country in five days. It was really tough. It was continuously raining. The roads were slushy, muddy. And because the mountains are all full of this red soil, so when it rained so heavy, they covered the road completely. And riding on it was very, very slippery. There were multiple times that I thought I was going to fall. The grip on the tires really helped me to ride very well. I was covering anything between 450 to 700 kilometers every day. In spite of all the challenges and obstacles, Sky and I were able to overcome everything through Myanmar. After this challenging ride, she finally reached the city of Yangon. One more bridge would take her into the mighty Thailand. Thailand was amazing for Sky and me because the roads were excellent. And currently I am riding to a place called Me Hong Son. Basically this is the best roads for bikers because it has around 3,100 bends. They were just gliding through every curve and the power that it had and just cruise along that uh, amazing highway. It's like a biker's paradise. The biker's paradise wasn't the only highlight. As she went further, she discovered the Karen tribe. So this is the village where all the long neck people stay. The women over here have these rings on their neck where they put one every year. The longer the neck, the more beautiful you look. Spending time getting to know people along the way was a very unique experience. Also get to experience the cultures. Ambitious dreams come with moments of hardships. For Candida, this was that moment. That day I was riding with a biker friend from Germany. Followed Google Maps and got lost in a national park. We ended up on this really, really bad trail. It got so difficult, so challenging, so we completely lost our strength. Lost in the national park, bikes are getting stuck in the deep slush. And now we're just going to camp here by the bikes because the sun is already set and we have no nowhere to go. We were not carrying enough of water or food. There was no one on that path. This was the hardest point on the trip. I should just be going home and not doing this. The only thing that kept me going was I had to do this for all the people that put in all their faith. Determined 
to reach her goal she resumed her ride and continued deeper into southeast asia as she entered lao her fifth country i always have a goal and make sure i push boundaries and overcome all these challenges and it was amazing meeting similar minded people in laos just uh, inspiring more women over there that i met and spoke to to follow their passion and do what they love from lao she entered thailand once again uh, i'm at a place called chantamburi headed uh, to this island called koh chong and it's going to be my first uh, island hop so everywhere i went everyone is so surprised that this is actually an indian motorcycle just to see everyone crowded around the bike all the time inspecting everything and saying wow such great quality huh? india oh where are you going australia australia yeah after riding down the south of thailand through bangkok she headed towards her next country malaysia a country which made her feel at home as soon after i left the border as i started riding through these lush forest area i saw like a whole group of bikers passed by me kind of realized that they were riding dominers as well i was really happy to meet so many dominer owners they took me around showed me so many different places after 88 days of traveling riding through difficult terrains and extreme weather conditions the rider and the machine got some rest Malaysia was the first country on this journey that I could actually go full throttle. I could constantly keep the throttle at 140. The engine wouldn't get overheated. It was smooth and I could always keep up with the other bikes even though I had so much of luggage on. As she cruised through smooth roads, another surprise awaited her. It was amazing. I was so away from home. Bajaj sent a cake with sky and me on it. They made me feel so special. After Malaysia, the next country that I rode to was Singapore. This is the country where I took a break just being a tourist having fun. I spent the whole day on Sentosa Island in Singapore. I visited the sea aquarium. To get sky into the land of the incredible islands, Indonesia, the bike had to be shipped. Indonesia being an island country has 17000 islands so i had to do a lot of island hopping on these ferry rides i got to meet a lot of scooter clubs and i got to make some amazing friends and the best part about indonesia was i was never alone even a single day i was being passed on from one motorcycle club to the next we are the pulsar members budget member All of them were so amazed, inspired by me riding all the way from India to Indonesia. I suddenly got lost in one of these rice fields. I was really scared because I had only one hour more of daylight, and then suddenly out of nowhere this boy comes walking towards me. He was like, "Please, please, I am a biker. Come to my house." I just went 2 minutes with him and then I reached this house. The whole tiny little village that they had there everyone came to this one house to meet me everyone were like singing hindi songs and like dancing <laughs> they escorting me through all the traffic but i was really glad to meet this group who got me to my hotel and i was safe when i left on this trip i was just one person but now i can say that domino australasian odyssey was not a solo trip but it's a trip with millions of people from all over the world there were many milestones that the journey crossed but few were as memorable as the one she passed before reaching mount bromo 
we just touched 19,999, almost 20,000. Now that I know it's 20,000 kilometers, I see that I've come so far, which I never thought I would. After crossing eight Asian nations, the final and the most awaited destination was Australia. But the entry to the last chapter of the Odyssey wasn't going to be an easy one. I had three days of time to like take down every part of my bike and to clean my bike and put it back together. Australia has very, very strict quarantine laws. So they do not want any dirt, no mud. So this was the biggest, biggest challenge for me. That's when Bajaj Auto came to my help. Like we somehow managed to do it just in time for the shipping. This was the first time that I was away from Sky for such a long time. Yes, yeah, so Sky passed the quarantine test finally. Inspector was very happy and he said this was the cleanest bike he has seen in a couple of years. Elated to be reunited with Sky in Australia, Candida resumed her ride from Perth on the west coast. The plan was to traverse the entire width of the country a mammoth ride of 6,000 odd kilometers. No crew, no backup. The roads are beautiful, but the only thing is the roads are so isolated. The only option you have is camp in your tent. Anytime, uh, just before dark, I would find a place in the bush and set up my tent. It's known as bush camping. A lot of really cool places. I finally made it to my camping spot. So my dinner for tonight is hummus and biscuit. The 90 mile straight road was up next. Hey everyone, it's been an amazing, amazing day of riding. Riding through the desert. A lot of Australians were always telling me that don't do this. Bikes tend to get overheated. There are people's tires, parts and stuff melting. But I just kept on going because the Domina was always keeping cool. My thighs were like never burnt. There was nothing stopping the bike. It, it just goes with so much ease. I just have to maintain the proper oil levels in the bike and constantly loop the chains. And that's all I had to do throughout the journey. On her way, she crossed some beautiful natural sites. Hamlin Bay, Gloucester Tree, Giant Treetop Walk, Elephant Rocks, and the Pink Lake. Australia is like a zoo. So amazing in the night, like uh, I can hear the kangaroos jumping by my tent. It's so rich in its wildlife in flora and fauna. As she headed towards the east coast, she ventured onto the Great Ocean Road. It's every biker's dream to ride on that road, so I'm super excited. But it's absolutely beautiful and it's cold. The temperatures fell drastically in this part of the country. At the Charlotte Pass, which is the highest pass in Australia, it's minus two degrees. Both these different temperature and different levels in altitude and everything, I felt no difference because it just kept going. When I got to Melbourne, I knew that there was only a few hundred kilometers left to Sydney, which was my final destination on this journey. I had so many mixed emotions. On one side, I was so happy that in a few days, I was going to meet Alistair's parents. And on the other hand, I was extremely sad because after so many months of traveling and being with my bike, it was finally coming to an end. Look at this. As I got closer to Sydney, a lifetime dream was about to come to an end. For me, it was not just a ride, but it was my whole life. With few seconds away, her dream was now well within sight. 
I finally made it to the last point on this journey which is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. I, I still can't believe I'm here after all these months but I'm, I'm so glad that I made it. No other Indian woman has done solo so far. It was a very, very proud moment for me. currently in Sydney at Alistair's home. I was super honoured to actually finish everything for him and like continue his message of asking more youngsters to travel and be out there and experiencing this beautiful world. After riding for 27,500 kilometers through six months on the road and there was absolutely no breakdown, this bike is going to be my companion for the rest of my years.